it's Jeffrey with Real Nifty Vintage and today I have a wonderful haul video consisting mostly of Franciscan Ivy. So I'm really excited to show you this. I have been a longtime lover of Franciscan Ivy even before I knew what it was. So I am a huge I Love Lucy fan and that is really where my passion of this pattern that I'm going to show you came from. And if you are a fan of that show, you probably recognize, I'll show you it right now, this. The Ivy dish, Dishware, and again, if you watch my channel, you're probably sick of me talking about it. Franciscan Ivy is a line by Gladding and McBean. It's been sold off to multiple companies over the years. It's not, it's not made any longer. There was a division made over in England called Ivy 2. It looks terrible compared to the real stuff. I hope you can find some of this for your own. Uh, because this is wonderful stuff. The, yeah, I don't know, the Ivy's, I'm not gonna get into why I don't like the uh, English version, but this is wonderful stuff and I paid so little for it. I am very happy that I was able to buy it though. So I went to an antique mall while I was up in Northern Illinois. It was called Volo, Volo, Illinois, V-O-L-O. -O. Strange name, never heard of it. And I think it has, well, it has four antique malls in this one uh, shopping center. So it's a great place. It was enormous. So it was a lot to get through and we have a whole video on it. Ashley and I recorded a video. She's another YouTuber. If you've never watched her, check her out. But we did a whole video shopping at that mall. Let me just get to this though, because I'm super excited about it. So I have dishes here. I'm gonna hold up what I can. So there are about 40 individual pieces here and I paid $40 for everything. Wonderful. Now I did have to, I did lose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did lose eight pieces that had like a chip or something wrong with them, but I'm left with about 40 pieces here. So that's like a dollar a piece. Wonderful price. I have the teacups, which I showed you earlier just then. Uh, we've got lots of, of these bread and butter plates. Here you can better see the detail of this pattern. So it has, it's like embossed and it's just really nice. Um, yeah, Franciscan Ivy. The stuff that I like to buy, and I mean it's not exclusive, but it was made in California. But this stuff was made in 1948 onward. So it had a long run. And if you ever watch I Love Lucy, like I said, pretty much every episode is going to have, if they're dealing with the kitchen or eating, they're gonna have this out. So yeah, fun fact. But I, I have a huge collection of it myself, but I know I'm scattered. Okay, part of my collection is this wonderful booklet here. This is a, well, it's a price book. It's a 1954 price book from Gladding McBean, McBean and Co. So it has all of these wonderful serving pieces in it. I made copies of this booklet and if you buy any of the Ivy stuff in my Etsy shop, I include one of those. It's like an added bonus. I include a copy of this. I actually have this other one here too that I picked up recently. It's in worse shape. This one is from, uh, I'm not sure. I don't see a date on it. But yeah, anyways. Okay, so I did write down some numbers because this stuff gets a little tricky. I have nine soup bowls. Let me show you what a soup bowl looks like. It's a wide rim soup bowl. You can also buy this stuff on replacements.com and like everything on their website, it's gonna be very expensive. If You could just go to eBay, honestly. Replacements.com has, that, uh, has that, that effect. They price things very high. They also get their stuff from private people. I mean, so let's say I had this in my family and I wanted to sell it. So I would go to replacements.com. There's like a button to sell something to them. They, I think they pay for the shipping, but they'll give you pennies for each thing. Things that have chips or whatever, they don't pay you anything for. So it's only for the good stuff. And what I have here is all good stuff. But basically, basically what I'm saying is well, if you want the stuff, just try to go on eBay. It's so it's so marked up on replacements.com. You can get it for about half the cost on eBay and you're gonna get just the right thing. That was a soup bowl. The soup bowl sells for, well, I have nine of them. I'm gonna sell them for a grand total of about $81 for the soup bowls. 
So what does that equal? About, is that like $10 a bowl or so? Maybe a little less? All of these wonderful soup bowls. Okay, then I have nine cups and saucers. So, the cups and saucers. There we go. It's a favorite. It's a favorite piece for any collector is the cup and saucer. They're always using these in the show. So there we are. I have nine of those and that will net me about, or that will sell for about $45 just for those. And then I have six luncheon plates, which are, well, yeah, which are these like, uh, they have luncheon plates, dinner plates, salad plates. I have, I actually have the luncheon plates and the salad plates, but not the dinner plates in this case. In my collection, I have the dinner plates. That's a luncheon plate. I believe it's like about eight and a half inches or maybe nine inches wide. So I have uh, seven, no, six of those luncheon plates and that'll bring me about $45 for all six of them. I think I'm gonna sell them as a set. So six plates for $45 plus shipping. Plus shipping. Yeah, I'm not dealing with, I'm not dealing with bad adding shipping in. This stuff is just so heavy. Uh, I just, I don't care to. I mean, I don't have to. Don't make me. <laughs> For most everything in my shop, I do free shipping. I bundle it in and then I give you a all-inclusive price. But for this, no, no need to. And then there are seven salad plates. That's gonna bring me about $45 as well. The salad plates, just the same exact thing, slightly smaller. And then I have six of the bread plates. Now the bread plates are, I can find bread plates pretty much all the time and they're not exactly flying off the shelves. So bread, cause who uses bread plates? I mean, if you're gonna assemble a collection, yes, you're gonna want them, but for daily use, they're great for dessert and stuff like that. But for daily use, I guess people aren't really using these. So they're not something that sells for a ton. The six bread plates will bring me about $15. And then I do have actually two chop plates, what's known as a chop plate, which is just a very large serving plate, or you can also use it as a cake plate too. It's this one here. So this one is actually a little bit wider, uh, bigger than the, than the regular dinner plate. So it's, it's wider. I think it's like, I don't know, 12 inches or so, 12 or 13 inches wide. And I have two of those. One of them has a, a tiny chip but um, that doesn't matter. I'm gonna keep both of them because I don't have any chop plates. So, but if I was gonna just sell the one without the chip, it would only sell for $10. It's another one of those items that like, you don't really need it unless you're assembling a collection because it's just a giant plate and people don't really entertain all that much. Uh, and then I have, oh, a small vegetable bowl. Here it is. I have cups in it right now. Okay, so they did make two bowls. They made the smaller one and they made a larger one. And they don't have sizes, they just say vegetable dish small, vegetable dish large. So um, I'm not sure which is which. Great thing about replacements.com is they do have the sizes and everything. So it's kind of like a living catalog, so to speak, of like what you can find in this pattern. Uh, you just go to replacements.com for that. So um, with all of that considered, I am going to sell all of those for a total selling price of $245. I did pay 40, so that means I'm gonna make about $200 on this set, so that's very nice. Um, happy, happy, happy. So, I was able to find my Franciscan IV, and I don't, you know, when I find it, I find it. So, uh, I did also find some Balik, and I have been collecting Balik items right now, uh, I just think they're beautiful and I was really excited to find my very first Balik basket bowl. It's a woven basket. I'll show you that one first and then we'll go proceed with some others. But this is a wonderful basket. It's all woven, hand done. It's not like molded or mass produced or anything like that. Each one of these flowers is hand painted and applied in Ireland by a real person. Beautiful stuff. And then I'll show you here all of this was hand laid over a form. They're individual pieces. Wonderful stuff here. This is a little open bowl. 
This is known as a four strand bowl and I'll show you the bottom which designates the strand count right there. So you'll notice on each one of these sections there are four individual strands that make it up. You'll also find three, hello, hi, hello. You'll also find three strand bowls too. But this is the four. Beautiful, I love the flowers. There are no chips or cracks, anything like that. These do sell on eBay, you can find them. They run about $55 plus shipping or so. Love this one a lot. It was originally marked $69 at the mall and I asked if they would do 50. If they wouldn't, that's fine. I would have just walked away and I would have been okay with it. In that case, they actually had to call the vendor and find out happy that they did. They were trying to give me 10% off and I was just not gonna have it, so no. I was just like, hey, you know, if they'll do 50, I'll take it. If not, no feelings hurt, you keep it. So I was really excited about that one. So that'll go in my little collection of Balik. I've been assembling a Balik collection. Fun fact, I was bidding, well, I didn't bid, I didn't get a chance to, but there was a wonderful Balik, also in a woven piece like this, but it was in their covered basket form. It's big, it's like 12 inches, has this domed top to it. They sell new, you can buy them on their website for like 3,000 and some change, $3,000 and some change. But somebody put one of these on eBay, not that, the good ones, the big, lots of detail. And it was selling for like, you know, there were bids on it, right? The bids were not very strong in comparison I checked on Worth Point and they were selling for the same thing for about $800. There was no issues at all on this piece. It was beautiful. Okay. So it was an auctioned off in a seven day listing. I think we were like three, no, we were like four or five days. We were getting down to the wire and I was getting ready to bid because I don't like to bid early. That makes no sense to me. So I was waiting to bid pretty much the last couple seconds. I know. People, uh, I don't personally see anything wrong with that. That's sort of the whole game of bidding with the system that they've got. And that's pretty much the only way I have ever won on eBay. I'm getting off into a tangent, but I'm curious however, how other people do this. Personally, I don't see any, any reason to bid on things at the start of an auction. I know this sounds crazy, but why? Why are you bidding? Why are you letting everyone know that you're interested, interested in it? And first and secondly, why are you bidding up the item because you're gonna bid on it. Somebody else is gonna see that bid. They're gonna say, okay, I could pay more and then they'll bid on it. It goes back and forth, back and forth and suddenly it's up to some crazy number. Why not just wait till the end? I don't know, I, I don't know. I guess that, that works if you know your bottom line and how much you really wanna spend and if you, so I think it does take some of that and some people like the game of back and forth, back and forth, I don't. I just wanna buy it for what I wanna buy it for and be done with it. So that's why I like to bid like the last 10 seconds of an auction. And uh, sometimes you get it for the asking. Anyways, what I'm trying to say about this, the bowl that was up, it was at $101 with like 13 bids on it. Still pretty good. Um, but it should have sold for about 800. Long story short, too late, I know. The seller pulled the item which I didn't know you could do, but they just pulled it. They were like, I guess they figured they didn't want to sell it for whatever. I think that's completely wrong and you should not be able to do that um, because you are taking a risk as a seller of putting something up for an auction and just because it's not going your way, that's not a reason to, to take it down. Unless you set a reserve or something and let people know, but uh, I don't think that's right to put something on for auction and have all these people interested and in getting emotionally invested in it willing to play the game that you started and then you decide to, uh, just to stop it. I don't like that. But um, yeah, it should have sold for about $800, but what, I guess what I'm trying to say is who knows what could have happened that last 10 seconds, that last minute or two, because sometimes things get shot up at the last minute. Uh, they just, they because people set these like crazy high prices whenever they're putting their bids in the automatic systems, they go and all this. Well, who knows? Uh, I just thought that was strange, but anyways, I was talking about Balik. I could have gotten a Balik bowl, maybe, who knows, but they pulled the listing. That's annoying. Uh, the basketballs are very nice. They do sell for about 800 to to $1,000. 
the when they come up on eBay. They sell new. You can buy them new, like I said, for about three thousand dollars at least. But um, the other Belique item that I bought was this one here for ten dollars, a great price because it also has. Oh, I just noticed it has the same blue flowers. Wonderful. So this here is stamped. I'll tell you the dating on this one. So we have this wonderful picture here. I was sure to make sure there was no issues at all. Again, we have these hand applied petals and leaves and everything on this wonderful porcelain. Beautiful. Now what we do notice here is there is a marking, which is great. And this dates to about 1965 to 1980. I believe it ends somewhere in March. March is the cutoff point of 1980 and then we switch over to a different stamp altogether. But, uh, so this has a very long run, this one green stamp, it's known as the sixth green mark. The sixth mark, it's green. But um, yeah, wonderful. And I will uh, hang on to this. It's just absolutely beautiful and only $10 was a great deal for me. The other piece of belief that I bought was this one right here. Also has the same exact mark. So it's among that 20 something year stretch, 30 year stretch. This one was $6. I'll show you, there we go. I like on this one, the little accents here. We got that pattern, we have this pattern, and then we've got this basket weave. And then we got another pattern here with this nice like luster sort of thing. Wonderful, I like that. It's kind of like a twisted rope. I love the shape of the spout. So there were many reasons I decided to buy this one for $6. I just like the shape of it. And then the last piece of Belique that I bought, this is the most Belique I've ever bought in one time too, is this wonderful shell bowl right here. I think it's known as like a Nautilus bowl or, I'm, I'm actually, I don't know. I, I haven't done a great deal of research on the different patterns. I usually stay away from the shell one, to be honest. I, uh, I just haven't really bought a lot of this kind. I do have another one that's kind of like a half radial, I forgot what they called it. It's like either a planter or, or something else, but it's like this, it's, it's, it's just kind of a strange shape. This one was $8, by the way. Oh, that's funny. Weird. Um, so I bought these in different areas of the mall. These are actually the same people. Cool. Huh. What was this one? They took the sticker off of that one. I bet these were all by the same vendor, so that's really interesting. Uh, actually, just two more things to show you. I've got this wonderful planter here. I'm unsure of who made it. It's uh, not a, it's a dresser valet, not a I always call these things planters. It's a dresser valet, so you can put your change and stuff in here. You could put a planter, I guess, or like fake whatever coming out the side or wallet, whatever. But this was only $10, and I think it's really cool. I'm actually not sure who made this one. It could either be Shawnee or McCoy. I'm leaning towards uh, Shawnee in this case. So um, I like this one because it has the trunk up. I especially love how they tie the tag to the um, trunk, like a never forget kind of, you know, you put it on your finger, but on the trunk. Um, don't they ever say elephants? They say elephants never forget. That's okay. So, um, Anyway, I paid $10 for this at the antique mall. I'm gonna sell it. I think it's gonna sell for about $40 at least with free shipping, included shipping. Uh, and it's not terribly light, but it's just cute. I thought it was cool. And we've got elephant collectors all over the place, so I had to get it. And I don't really see this one. I usually see the wiener dog, the dash hound, or is that, I'm not sure. But yeah, that brown dog, and it's the same thing. Uh, a dresser valet. Uh, oh, the last thing that I got was also at the antique mall. Super excited to buy it. I love buying rotary phones. This one's a red one. Red is a great color, very fashionable, kind of like a Manolo Blahnik. No, I'm just kidding. I don't, I'm currently going through all of the Sex and the City seasons right now for the second time in my lifetime. Uh, we're binge watching and we're watching that on, uh, on the TV, but so I just had that in my mind. <laughs> but we have this wonderful red rotary phone. Oh, she has a, a rotary phone in her apartment. Carrie Bradshaw does. Um, by the way, people seem to not like her, not her character necessarily, but 
Sarah Jessica Parker. I wonder why. People have like an issue with her. I don't care either way. I'm just trying to figure out like, did she do something? I don't know. So this is a red rotary phone. What I like about this red rotary phone is the black button. So I think it's a hold button. So that means this is probably for a secretary. Even cooler, it's the first one I found. But one crazy thing I thought about was, wouldn't this be cool as like one of those emergency phones that you call to get Superman or whatever? You know, like it's your emergency line to superheroes. I know it sounds silly, but it's different. I like the black button. I've never seen one with a button period like on there. This phone, by the way, is from 1972. Whoa. Oh, is it 72? Well, usually you can tell. I thought it was 72. Usually there's just a marking on the bottom here of when it was made. Uh, this one was made in Canada and it's a General Electric, by the way. I believe it's in perfect working shape. This has to be the 70s because it has a silver, has one of these like silver um, jacks. So I'm sure it works. I don't know for sure that it works, but I'm pretty sure that it does because these things always worked. Um, that said, I don't ever test my rotary phones because I don't have a way to. And it's just kind of a lot of trouble to find somebody, somebody who does and then go to their house and then try it out. and. Uh, so I don't have a lot of problems just selling them as what they are. And I've sold rotary phones, a great deal of them, great number of them, for anywhere between $30 and as high as, as high as $115. General Electric, it's a good name. So hopefully I could sell this one here for around about $80, $80 to $100 with free shipping. I'm pretty sure I will be able to. It's very unique. So that's really cool. And I paid $20 for it at the antique mall. That was just, it was just a great day. There was a lot to it. It's a big mall. I strongly recommend it if you are near that area. Great time with Ashley. I had a really fun experience. I would like to do it again. I think we had a great old time. I wanna go somewhere new. Maybe we'll go somewhere around Springfield. Uh, it'll be a little bit closer to me. We'll kind of meet, meet in the middle there. Really fun. So, all in all, great stuff. Really happy about the Franciscan Ivy. I need to get that listed. But anyways, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.